ان الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا وخلق السماوات والارض في ستة ايام الرحمن على العرش استوى له ما في السماوات وما في الارض وما بينهما وما تحت الثرى وان تجهر بالقول فانه يعلم السر واخفى الله لا اله الا هو له الاسماء الحسنى له الحمد في الاولى والاخره وله الحكم واليه ترجعون نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهدي الله فهو المهتد وما يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ملك عظيم مقتدر تاذن بالزياده لمن امن وشكر وتواعد بالعذاب لمن غفل وكفر ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله الرسول النبي الامي الذي يؤمن بالله وكلماته ارسله ربه شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا سيد الاولين والاخرين خاتم النبيين والمرسلين ورحمة للعالمين فالذين امنوا به وعزروه ونصروه واتبعوا النور الذي انزل معه اولئك هم المفلحون ومن يعص الله ورسوله ويتعدى حدوده يدخله نارا وكان ذلك على الله يسيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وامنوا برسوله يؤتكم كفلين من رحمته ويجعل لكم نورا تمشون به ويغفر لكم والله غفور رحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد there are great atrocities committed by individuals sometimes groups sometimes organizations sometimes nations the century we are in brothers and sisters has started to be one of the most bloodiest we're just in the year 2017 we've seen many wars in all parts of the globe and human beings are dying in the hundreds of thousands and in the millions you see in some places of the world every day there will be death and destruction and there is no safety for anyone why is this happening dear respected brothers and sisters my dear respected brothers and sisters there is a war against islam that started not in the 911 decade that started not in the century prior that did not start 1400 years ago nor 3000 that war has always been there since the establishment of the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but what i want to remind myself and remind you that today the war has a new name a frightening name and i'm not here to frighten you but i'm hope that you will be frightened and that war is called the war on terrorism a war on a tactic and yet the people we go after in this war are primarily people that are deemed to be muslim 
How is it so that somebody in this nation can commit such an egregious, nefarious, and dastardly act? Massacre nearly 60 people in Las Vegas. Injured over 500 until this day, no one has labeled that man a white Christian, a terrorist. Why? Is one act of terrorism better than the other? Or worse than the other. What is then terrorism? If you can do such a thing and we're still trying to find the mental reason why you did it. Maybe his father abandoned him when he was a child. He was unfortunate. Although he's a millionaire. Or maybe he has a mental problem. Well, someone with a mental problem will not be such an avid and inveterate gambler to make so much money off of gambling. Or maybe he had an axe to grind. We're trying to find the axe. This is a textbook case of terrorism, which from the president and all the way down to the media, no one wants to label it so. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, this is nothing new. Because if you look to our pious predecessors, the, the MBA before, I want to draw your attention to one of the MBA that has a nexus with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And thus, since we're in the month of Muharram, we must reflect upon that, inshallah. And that, brothers and sisters, is Ashura that passed us last weekend. There are many parts in the Muslim world, people celebrate this either with big parties or with big mornings. Extremes of nonsense. The importance of Ashura has got nothing to do with the death of anyone, but has got to do with something bigger than all of us. And that is the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is this so? Remember that Bani Israel were in Egypt. For centuries, they were enslaved and punished. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Musa alayhi salam to lead them to the path of freedom so they can worship Allah, do you know what Fir'aun labeled them as? He labeled them as terrorists. He labeled them as dissidents. His chief said, are you going to allow them to change the status quo? Atadharu Musa wa qawmahu liyufsidu fil ard wa yadaraka wa alihatak. What fasad was Musa and Bani Israel spreading in Egypt? Subhanallah. This is what they use. Whenever you are righteous, the haters of righteousness will label you bad names that make people fear you. And that is the essence of this war and terror. To use the word terrorism to scare people to fear the enemy. Musa and Bani Israel, terrorists. At least from the context of Fir'aun. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them from that. When they crossed to safety, Bani Israel violated one of the fundamental one of the essence of Iman and Tawheed. And that is they worship the calf. When they did that, they were doing it while Musa was receiving wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine? Musa just left them for a few days. A few days. And while he was gone, they were committing shirk. While Musa was up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Musa a Torah. And he stated, وَكَتَبْنَا لَهُ فِي الْأَلْوَاحِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مَوْعِظَةً وَتَفْصِيلًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ Musa came down with a book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a great book of Allah, finding Bani Israel committing shirk. So because of that instance, Musa alayhi salam wanted to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to beg for mercy. So Allah tells us, وَاخْتَارَ مُوسَىٰ قَوْمَهُ سَبِعِينَ رَجُلًا لِمِيقَاتِنَا So Musa selected 70 people from Bani Israel to go to a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
However, Allah tested them along the way. Allah caused the earth to tremor. Then they started to worry. They started asking Allah, Please don't destroy us because of what others did. إِنْ هِيَ إِلَّا فِتْنَتُكَ تَضِلُّ بِهَا مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَهْدِي مَنْ تَشَاءُ أَنْتَ وَلِيُّنَا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا وَارْحَمْنَا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْغَافِرِينَ So they asked Allah to forgive them, not to punish them for the sins of others. They said to Allah, وَاكْتُبْ لَنَا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ إِنَّا هُدْنَا إِلَيْكَ O Allah, write for us hasana in this dunya and akhirah. We turn to you in repentance. Before I tell you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, the saving of Musa and Bani Israel, that is celebrated today as Yom Kippur. You know what Yom Kippur means for the Jews? It means the day of atonement. For them is the Sabbath of all Sabbaths. It is the holiest day for Al-Yahud. It is a day that they spend in Siyam till this day. So beg for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when they asked Allah for this mercy, Allah had an interesting response to them. Allah said, my punishment, I will afflict whomever I want. وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ But my rahma encompasses everything. And then he told Bani Israel, the requirements for receiving the encompassing rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ If you want the ever encompassing rahma of Allah, you must have taqwa. وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ you must do tazkiyah of yourself and of your wealth. And you must believe in the ayat of Allah. These three descriptions, subhanallah, Allah gave it not to Bani Israel, but gave it to someone else in front of Bani Israel. Then Allah told them, these three qualities belong to the following people. الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الرَّسُولَ النَّبِيَّ الْأُمِّيِّ الَّذِي يَجْدُونَهُ مَكْتُوبًا عِنْدَهُمْ فِي التَّوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ يَأْمُرُهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَاهُمْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيُحِلُّ لَهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ وَيَضَعُ عَنْهُمْ إِسْرَهُمْ وَالْأَغْلَالَ الَّتِي كَانَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِهِ وَعَزَّرُوهُ وَنَصَرُوهُ وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورَ الَّذِي أُنْزِلَ مَعَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Bani Israel, if you want to be saved by my mercy that encompasses everything, that encompassing mercy has only been prescribed for those who follow the prophet, the messenger, the unlettered one that they find already inscribed in their book. يَجِدُونَهُ مَكْتُوبًا عِنْدَهُمْ فِي التَّوْرَةِ why would Allah say that? Because Musa has already received a Torah. Subhanallah. It means Allah wrote it in a Torah. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be rahmatan lil alameen. That none of us can gain rahmah unless we follow him. Subhanallah. Musa got the memo. Did we get the memo? Subhanallah. Allah said, I wrote in a Torah. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be a rasul and nabi al ummi. And because of him, we can gain the infinite rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah told Allah to Musa and Bani Israel that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the door to rahmah, that the nexus between Musa and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Ashura is important. It should remind us of the Rahmah of Allah that He saved Musa and Bani Israel by a miracle of crossing the ocean on foot, on dry land, and Allah drowning Fir'aun. And even when they committed shirk, Allah was willing to forgive those who made tawbah. 
So my dear respected brothers and sisters, this is the month of Muharram, and the year is 1439. It's a holy month, and therefore we must observe it as so, by spreading Rahmah to mankind, by begging Allah for His Rahmah in forgiveness and Tawbah. And my dear respected brothers and sisters, with all the death and destruction that is committed, some in the name of Islam, Allah does not tolerate such a thing. And the other death and destruction in the name of the war on terror, it's a farce. And Allah does not accept that either. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, how are we to live these days, insha'Allah? أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد. Dear respected brothers and sisters, we are privileged to be Muslim today. We are privileged that other people hate us specifically because of our deen. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وما نقم منهم إلا أن يؤمنوا بالله العزيز الحميد. You and I are hated because we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make no mistake about it. Muslims are the least violent people in the history of the world. In the history of mankind. Muslims have defeated great nations and not massacred anyone. Fatih Makkah did not lead to a massacre or bloodshed. The opening of Faris, of Hashem, Philistine, there was no massacre. The Muslims are not known for committing such acts. That is why no one who works calling themselves Muslim should be doing anything of such. However, dear respected brothers and sisters, the label war and terror is only specifically used a specific way in such a way that it only means a Muslim. So therefore, a doctor, a PhD, decided to conduct an experiment, just a survey of people, by showing them acts of what we would call terrorism, massacres, to see what their response would be. So, if the person that perpetrates this act is white, only about 30% of the people would associate that massacre as an act of terrorism. SubhanAllah, look at that. If the person is just white. And you can add other they decided to create characteristics of the person, mental illness, throw it in there. As soon as you, you, you change the profile to somebody who is non-white, the amount of people that would say that's an act of terrorism jumps 10 plus percent. So now you can see that this idea of terrorism is very subjective. As soon as you then associate Islam with that person, it jumps even by many more scores. This is a perception of people now. He wanted to know why aren't we calling terrorism, terrorism. So the highest percentage of any act that is deemed terrorist is only acts that are committed by a Muslim for a cause. Whether that person killed one person or many, it is seen as an act of terrorism. How many more people should somebody in America kill at once? What about slaughtering 26 children in an elementary school? That was not an act of terrorism. The boy was just crazy. What about a white man goes into a black church and massacres people? Well, he's also crazy. We find the excuses for other people. What's worse than San Bernardino? What's worse than the Orlando nightclub shooting? What's worse than even the, uh, the shooting in the naval base? All of that, what happened in Las Vegas is far worse. Even the victims will tell you that. And yet, no one till this day, and the researcher concluded, <coughs> terrorism is a term only used politically. 
that it is a subjective term and it is only used by those who feel the pulse of the people. So the media will use the term terrorism if it has a certain impact on people. And that politician will, will use the term terrorism as well. That war and terror is just another disguise for the war on Muslims and Islam. Sometimes it is used rightfully or wrongfully. That's what it is. But I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, don't despair the rahmah of Allah. This war on terror did not start today. It started at the time of Noah. Noah was actually branded a danger to the society. Noah alayhi salam. Lut was told, أَخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ Get rid of him. إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسُ يَتَطَهَّرُونَ They're trying to be pure. Kick him out. He's a danger to our society. Lut is the danger. Not what the people are doing. The worst kind of fahisha, which Allah punished them the worst way, it's Lut that's the problem. All the Anbiya were branded terrorists, brothers and sisters, but just different words. Today, you and I are branded so. But for us to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let me tell you, then the end result of that. A man came to the Prophet, a Bedouin came to Al Madina. He prayed behind the Prophet. He came with his camel, put it down. He prayed. Before he left, he mounted his camel and said, Oh Allah, grant your mercy upon me and Muhammad only, nobody else. That's a weird dua. Just for you and one other person. It is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when he heard that? He asked the companions. He says, "Atakulun." Would you say that this man is more misguided than the camel that he has? I mean, for making such a dua. And he asked them, "Alam tasma'u ma qal?" Did you not hear what he said? They said, "Yes, we heard." Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to this man. لَقَدْ حَضَرْتَ رَحْمَةً وَاسِعًا To ask Allah to make rahmah only for you and me, you are now trying to constrict the rahmah of Allah that is so expansive. And then he told us this, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ خَلَقَ مِئَةَ رَحْمَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his rahmah, divided it into a hundred parts. فَأَنزَلَ رَحْمَةً وَاحِدًا He sent one of these parts of rahmah, subhanallah, فَأَنزَلَ رَحْمَةً he said, يَتَعَاطَفُ بِهَا الْخَلَائِقِ الْخَلْقِ يَتَعَاطَفُ بِهَا الْخَلْقِ الْإِنسُهَا وَجِنُّهَا وَبَهَائِمُهَا That 1% of Allah's rahmah is what keeps this world going. The entire universe. In the other hadith, that's why even an animal has rahmah for its young. That is why a lion will not kill a baby, gazelle, if it doesn't have mother. Subhanallah. All of this is the rahmah of Allah. The rahmah of a mother for the child. This is from just 1% of Allah's rahmah. And he said, وَأَخَّرَ عِنْدَهُ And he said for himself, the 99%. تِسْعَوْ وَتِسْعِينَ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Why is Allah saving the most of his rahmah? يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Because that is the day Allah will forgive this ummah and all those who believed in Allah. And thus the Prophet Sallallahu gave us good news. إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَجَاوَزَ لِأُمَّتِي مَا حَدَّثَتْ بِهِ أَنفُسُهَا مَا لَمْ تَقُلْ أَوْ تَعْمَلْ Allah has forgiven off from this ummah anything we even conceive of as in evil as long as we don't say it or we don't do it. Not only that, the Prophet ﷺ told us, if you thought of an evil deed, but you don't do it, Allah gives you a hasana. And if you do it, you get one sayyiah for it only. And if you make tawbah, the sayyiah becomes hasana. You win, even if you commit a sin. I'm not saying be sinful, I'm just telling you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in Quran. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا 
this ummah Allah is waiting to forgive us in such a way that is unimaginable and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another hadith Rufi'a an ummati on this ummah Allah has uplifted the following anything we do al khata you make a mistake Allah is willing to forgive it when nisyan you do things because of forgetfulness Allah will forgive it wa mas tukrihu and if you're compelled to do something Allah will forgive you rahmatan wasi'ah 99% reserved for this ummah and you and I should strive hard to gain this barakah and this rahmah but it means you and I will suffer under the hands of the war and terrorism once you're branded a terrorist, it means no mercy for you in this dunya for the people who brand you as a terrorist. It's a license for them to do anything illegal with impunity. But just remember, brothers and sisters, Bani Israel suffered at the hands of Fir'aun, unspeakable acts. And I'm just going to conclude by telling you what Musa told them. قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ اسْتَعِينُوا بِاللَّهِ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ الْأَرْضَ لِلَّهِ يُورِثُهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ O Muslims, here and around the world, إِسْتَعِينُوا بِاللَّهِ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ الْأَرْضَ لِلَّهِ يُورِثُهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ We'll suffer today, but we will inherit tomorrow. Because by our suffering, we will gain the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dunya and akhirah. And inshallah, when we enter Jannah, do you know what of the, one of the things we will say? وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي صَدَقَنَا وَعْدَهِ وَأَوْرَثَنَا الْأَرْضِ نَتَبَوَّأُ مِنْهَا حَيْثُ نَشَاءُ When you enter Jannah, you will not only be grateful to Allah, you will be proud that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you inherit Jannah. This dunya is not worth inheriting. No matter how much acreage you have, we will put you on a two by six and somewhere deep down. You cannot take this dunya with you, but the akhirah is waiting for you. My dear respected brothers and sisters, it's clear. War and terrorism is only used for Muslims. But inshallah, by our salah and our patience, Allah will fight all our enemies. Allah will uplift all the strife. Allah will bring peace between our hearts so that we stop fighting one another. Allah will make all the violence in our land stop. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yawm al qiyamah, will show us how much is 99% of rahmah. It's so simple for Allah. He says in groups and hordes of us, Allah sent malaika to tell you you're entering Jannah. Don't be worried. Allah made malaika will open for you the doors. Malaika will serve you in Jannah, inshallah, brothers and sisters. You will reflect back on this dunya and say, I wish I suffered more for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be afraid, brothers and sisters. Keep your deen. It's the only tangible thing you have, brothers and sisters. No matter how hard it is. Being a Muslim is the most precious thing in the sight of Allah. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayu alladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Muhammad. Wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama sallayta wa sallamta wa barakta ala Ibrahim. وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا برحمتك شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يفضع عليك اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر الإسلام والمسلمين واغفر لجميع موت المسلمين يا عزيز يا كريم ربنا لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا ضلا إلا هديته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا عاصيا إلا رحمته ولا عاسرا إلا يسرته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيت يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا لا تفرق هذا الجمع إلا بذنب مغفور وسعي مشكور وعمل متقبل مبرور يا عزيز يا غفور ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة 
وقنا عذاب النار وادخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة فإن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون